Who else likes speed? When it comes to the subject of speed, it's always fun going over a Flash character. Barry Allen, Injustice. Flash is such a being a video game character. He's a being with a decent amount of lore because the Injustice games have a couple games and they have comics to continue to add more lore on their adventures. Let's get into it. You guys already know the deal. He's a speedster on the Justice League. You guys know how edgy the Injustice universe is. Superman thought that was Doomsday. That really wasn't Doomsday. That was actually his own wife and sweetie he killed. Superman goes crazy, becomes a tyrant, makes a regime. That's where you pretty much see these conflicts. Heroes divided, heroes fighting each other. Flash actually sides with Superman joining his regime. Flash had like a morality crisis and kind of was trying to sympathize with Superman killing Joker and stuff. But he promised that if Superman ever went too far, he would stand up to him. And yeah, Superman did go too far, killing Shazam and stuff. Yeah, you can't be doing that. So yeah, that's when Flash pretty much turned against him. They went on a lot of adventures, a lot of different things they've went through. Let's analyze his power though, shall we? I mean, these Injustice superheroes have even met the deities, you know, in their adventures. And this universe acknowledges other speedsters existing in the multiverse, you know. Just like normal comics or main continuity, this universe version of Flash, since he's connected to this thing known as the Speed Force, he can actually do time travel, change history if he wishes. You got a case like this in a super move that imply he has the ability to travel through time to the dinosaur age he can travel forward in time or back in time time travel via the speed force he can do some intangibility type stuff martian manhunter type stuff by vibrating through walls and it's hard to keep him restrained because his vibration is so crazy so even without like momentum he still can kind of break free of stuff or grips there's implications he has electrokinesis to be able to throw lightning literally you would think this wouldn't work on lantern constructs like yellow lantern constructs. He can still vibrate through it. He's a speed-based character, so his durability isn't when he specializes in anything. This could be partly because of his super suit or gear or armor. He got slung that far, for example. And a normal human getting slung like that, they definitely would have died, but he didn't die. Didn't break any bones either. Just gets back up. He still has superhuman durability, even if his durability isn't like Superman's. There's implications he has super speed healing as well, but his only weakness, I would say, to super healing is like absolute zero ice or something or ice in general, you know? Being a speed force user is more than just running fast because one could say you can travel between universes or realms or worlds. In the Injustice Universe, they talk about the Speed Force here. Here they're talking about alternate Earths, alternate universes. It's literally stated Flash can travel between alternate worlds, universes, because just siphoning off his energy alone is enough for interdimensional travel. So his simple Speed Force energy can be used as a conduit to pretty much transport. Like it's literally confirmed you can actually run into the Speed Force because it's like a separate dimension outside of space and time. Here's the thing about super speed. There's one thing in being fast in like a straight line. But having the reflexes to make sharp turns in the blink of an eye, that's fighting speed or combat speed. And if you read enough DC Comics, you should already know this. But if you don't know this, yeah, he's fast in both those ways when it comes to reflexes and straight line point A to point B speed. There's plenty of examples of them talking and the world around them is just frozen. Superman, somebody that also has crazy combat or fighting speed, says the Flash can think faster than anybody on Earth. That's why he can super learn fast because he'll have stuff display at flash speed so he'll learn it real quick. He has the fighting speed to easily dodge arrows that are shot from behind him. Green arrow shooting the arrows at him. He's too fast. He just catches it with ease. Bullets are literally almost frozen or slow motion at times. Literal god of speed level beings like Hermes of Olympus called his speed impressive. This is literally proven when we see them slugfest and we can see how he could throw out multiple punches real fast so he can punch really fast. He can do a lot of punches in probably less than a second. He can hit you so fast to where it's literally you can't see his hands. Beings that are similar to Green Lanterns that can make constructs is implied he can smack Sinestro down before he even have a chance to make a construct to show his fighting speed, his ability to blitz you faster than you can think. He's such a threat when battling against him, they got to think about Flash because if they don't deal with him quickly, he can blitz you before you even realize anything happened. One of his arch nemesis is that it's basically like him when it comes to the same abilities and everything. One can say they're dang near even when it comes to fighting speed, raw speed, point A to point B level speed, and everything you can think of when it comes to speed. This same being that Flash can keep up in raw speed with literally was able to blitz Wonder Woman and she was having a hard time reacting to his punches and stuff. This is the same being Flash had to fight 1v1 and compete within raw speed. Keep in mind that Wonder Woman isn't slow. One of her main things she's known for is actually blocking and reacting to bullets and Flash is way faster than bullets. Matter of fact, he's way faster than Superman and Wonder Woman. It even stated in the time between each vertebrae popping, I could have acted 10 times. 
because he's the fastest man alive. He can save this many people, Amazons including Batwoman, that kind of speed. When there's a lot of people armed with guns, this many for example, he can literally take all their guns out of their hands this quick. Before the building could finish falling, he saved the people before the building could finish falling. Saving more while it was continuing to fall. Some of this stuff is a mixture of reflexes and running speed. He says, Flash, I'm in Metropolis that quick. He does this kind of running 90 miles straight for fun. He can make his own tornadoes by spinning his hands real quick. Literally tornado hands. Implied he can literally make his own tornado. Man, this is simple stuff when it comes to striking power, being able to tilt cars by striking. When it comes to how hard he can hit, it's little stuff that you would definitely expect him to be able to do when it comes to how hard he can strike. Break concrete with his hits. I mean, I don't think anybody had their doubts about Flash having the raw speed and punching power to punch through concrete or brick walls with less than 1% of his punching power. With his super speed, he can literally do a thunderclap to make a shockwave to blast people away with a long range type of attack and just blitz you with a whole bunch of punches in an instant. Everybody already knows this, but I'll just repeat it. When it comes to Flash, his physical strength is not his strong suit, but he doesn't really need super strength when you're this fast. I will admit though, lifting up normal sized humans does not seem to be an issue how he lifts this woman here with no issues while running at super speed and he easily has the strength to carry batman somebody that weighs at least 200 something pounds so yeah he got that kind of strength easily i mean you got a case where he even lifts up two normal sized humans so yeah he's not completely helpless when it comes to just lifting weight i would definitely call harley quinn a super soldier tier type character you know how humans in dc be super strong even if they have no powers that's how i look at harley quinn but when it comes to flash when it comes to how hard he can punch he can one shot punch knockout beings like harley so even though his physicals ain't all that he doesn't really need it because his speed makes him be able to punch hard right here. We see him literally punch convicts and make them sleepy. So yes, he can punch really hard. Like Brainiac's drones. We just see him just punching right through them, one-shotting them with his punching power. They're literally slow motion. We've seen him punch multiple Amazonian warriors, beings that are definitely above superhuman strength and durability. When it comes to ice, we've seen him break out of. You see Killer Frost right here, an ice user, we see her freeze him. You know, ice is usually supposed to be his counter and he's still able to break out. Like on this occasion, you see King Shark here, like this is how you know he can hit hard. He threw a broom so ridiculously hard that it actually went through King Shark. Like this universe is dark. He actually killed King Shark. Not just having the punching strength like I showed already of punching Amazonians, but also the top tier, the top of the top Amazonian punching one woman down like that. We literally see him slugfest it and punch it with gods like Hermes, gods of speed, and apparently made Hermes sleepy. Like we've seen Hermes, the god of speed, have enough raw physical strength to stop a blow from Wonder Woman and Slinger. So you know Hermes isn't a weakling, but Flash can punch hard enough to knock him the freak out or make him go sleepy, a deity. There's implications his strikes or thunderclaps can harm Green Lantern tears or Yellow Lantern tears, lanterns in general. I just want you guys to get an idea of how strong these powerhouses are. For example, a lantern, not necessarily Hal Jordan right here, but this is Sinestro. They was able to make a huge crater on the moon like this. You can see the curvature of it and he's not dead from this. So it kind of lets you know what these lanterns can endure. Think of it in this perspective. You see how the picture is kind of lining up with the picture I use with the moon. This kind of can give you an idea of how big of a crater that superman was able to produce on a moon sized structure meaning that he can do a nice chunk of damage to like this much of the moon or something like that because you see how much damage he did right here you see you get a visual of how much force this was if my vision is not acting crazy i would say this is at least enough raw power based on how big these cracks are on the moon sized structure this would at least be island shattering right like it just looks like a big crater like we know the moon is like a multi-continental sized structure and you make a big crater this large making an impact that big on it this is a disrespect calling it just island shattering. That's like a bare minimum. And I want you guys to realize that the Flash has actually fought different lanterns, not necessarily just Hal Jordan, but also yellow lanterns like Sinestro on this occasion. I would like to mention that Flash actually fought him 1v1 and literally knocked him out to the point where Sinestro was so sleepy, Flash had time to actually build a pyramid around him. Not just Sinestro lanterns, but also Hal Jordan, yellow lantern he's knocked out. So yeah, he can actually defeat Green Lantern tears, beings that can withstand attacks that can shatter entire islands, you know, at the very least, right? So by default, wouldn't you say his punches can do something similar when it comes to using his speed and velocity to tremble an entire city or even sink an entire island or city? What do you think? I think that confirms it. Super top tier Atlanteans like Aquaman, he can blitz over and over again, stagger him with his punches. Probably his most impressive feat of strength when it comes to his punching power strength, being able to actually sting Superman even though he did counter flash here. Just with the implications like this, it shows that his punches are impressive. Look at the discomfort in his face. 
I mean, all this punching power adds up. I mean, when you can search the entire park for certain people via combat speed, everything's frozen and you can punch at these levels of speed. When you have the raw speed to run around the whole world and use that speed and momentum with your punch, it's no wonder you can punch this hard to sting Superman. Him running around the world in the video game scene is definitely canon when it comes to how fast he really is because we see him do similar stuff like this in comic lore. Like you can literally see cutscenes of him achieving this kind of speed. This is casual speed, by the way, y'all. He's not even trying as hard as he can run around the world. Going from continent to continent, running across the water. It's just casual speed. Cutscenes, not just gameplay mechanics. You get the idea. Literally stated in gameplay, he circled the globe. Like, we we know this. You know he can really run around the world with super speed. Superman's body and how hard Superman can punch can endure a lot. Like, there's implications he can tremble the entire planet of Apocalypse. Superman can. His body can withstand punches that have world-crushing dominance. Like, look at the explosions Superman and Darkseid are producing on this planet. Superman and Darkseid's punches were so crazy that they was going to rupture the planet if they didn't stop when it comes to their punches. So we know Superman's body can withstand similar blows to his own. Like his body's durable enough to withstand blows that can threaten the entire planet's core. Like it was so bad when it comes to the rupture in the planet's core that if the planet's core was to melt down, it will explode, killing millions and flooding the galaxy with radiation, flooding the galaxy. It was talking about how Apocalypse is discharging dangerous levels of geothermal energy. So they really were threatening the planet. And Flash is it implied that his punches can at least sting him. I'm not saying his punches are exactly equal, but he's somewhere in the ballpark, one could say. I mean, there's no exact math to this. I mean, we'll never really know for sure. But based on this, if there was like a greed or something, if we assume Superman can punch with planet trembling might when it comes to his punching power, when it comes to Flash is being able to sting him because Superman's durability is similar to his punches and such. Even if you were to say Superman's punching power is greater, that would not really change much. It would just change the fact that Flash can tremble smaller planets. If we're assuming that he can actually damage a full powered Superman's durability with his super speed force punches, that would just by default make this universe version of Flash when it comes to his punching power a planet shaker as well when it comes to the impact of his punches, which would imply Flash could tremble the planet as well if he can damage Superman of his universe with his super speed force punches or whatever. I think this pretty much confirms that Flash could rupture the core of a planet with his punches just like how Superman can. I don't see no reason why he wouldn't be able to do this too. Even if he can't necessarily defeat Superman, his punches can at least inflict discomfort on him a bit. Part of the reason why he can punch so hard is because he's so fast. He's way faster than Super Soldier tears it's pretty much obvious when it comes to the heaviest hitters he's even faster than them when it comes to raw speed travel speed or fighting speed like sinestro no matter which lantern beam we're talking about whether it's green or yellow lanterns whoever has the yellow or green ring it doesn't really matter when it comes to raw speed flash in every aspect is just implied via writer intent to be faster than all of them i mean we're talking about a guy that can literally run over the entire planet to try to find a certain place Stated here, looking literally everywhere, vibrating through vault doors in England up to the tops of skyscrapers in Dubai, looking for one thing, one place no one had found in five years of war. Like he literally ran everywhere on the planet. Like you see all those red streaks. Like this guy is implied to be the fastest. Like I would even go as far as saying whatever these beings can do when it comes to the concept of pure speed, the Flash can do better. Let me say it again for those in the back. I said pure speed. He's faster than all these beings. And these beings are not slow in comparison. We know Superman's fast. Lanterns are fast because they have to fly throughout the universe and crap. And Supergirl's fast. This is one of those Mortal Kombat situations. Like, this move is necessarily not canon. But the speed or powers you see in these super moves are technically canon. I mean, that's something they can do in narrative. When it comes to Kryptonians being able to fly faster than the speed of light. Massively faster than the speed of light flying to the earth to the sun. Stuff like that I totally think are possible for them in their speed. Because even if you want to say you don't want to count that at all. We've actually seen these Kryptonian tiers do stupid speed feats like this. Like I'm not joking. Superman literally said, oh let me just fly off the planet. To fly to another planet outside of the solar system. Yeah, Apocalypse is a planet that's nowhere near Earth. Like, I'm talking about light years away at the very least. And Superman seriously just flew there in a panel. Massively faster than the speed of light. And we've seen on too many occasions, or we have too much writer intent, that there's implications that he's faster than Superman in every regard. Like, you got comic panels like this that implied. I mean, any comic reader knows this. Like, this has always, a, this has always been a theme about him being faster than Superman. We see Superman literally blitzing Plastic Man here. We see Flash get in front of him before Superman can even continue the blitz, showing superior speed. There's even statements. Remember all those races we ran? I remember winning a few too. Those were for charity, Clark. We've raced many times, Barry. Think I'm a bit too fast for you. I'm stronger than you, Barry. Doesn't matter if you can't hit me. I'm the fastest man alive. 
Just like main continuity comics, this universe seems to be following that same trend of whatever Superman can do in speed, the Flash can do better. It's the same concept. Faster than all these beams and knowing they can use this velocity or momentum in his combat. Are you really shocked? That there's a great possibility he can also tremble planets or even planet or rupture the core of a planet with his punching power output as well, just like Superman can. Planet toy shattering, you know. Flash is faster than a being that can fly and combat at speed to where he can fly around the world. Like, this being Superman is already fast enough to fly around the world and blitz and destroy these parademons with his heat vision when it comes to speed. This fast, so you know Flash can do stuff like this or better, you know. And we're not even going to get on Green Lanterns being able to fly from one end of the universe to the other. Imagine being punched with speeds of being able to fly from one side of the universe to another. Like imagine being over here on the left on this side of the galaxy, but moving with so much speed to where you get to the other side of the galaxy in a couple seconds or a second or two. And imagine being punched by the Flash running at you with this kind of speed. Man, that hit would feel like the force needed to shatter or split a planet. Okay, so you know how DC has a multiverse. There's some implications that these Flash characters or powerhouses in Injustice are even stronger than what I've already talked about in this video so far. Because you know how this universe over here is like the main continuity, Rebirth comics, the main Superman we know of from back in the day, Batman, the main people that all these characters are inspired from, right? The main universe over here. Tell me why there's Injustice characters that have interacted with these characters to kind of imply their power levels even greater. Like this is the main continuity Superman's son, for example, John Kent. We've actually seen some interactions with Injustice characters, which would kind of change the game of what we thought we knew about the power levels of Injustice. Okay, so you know how John Kent, like he's usually over here with the main characters we know of, like the main continuity characters. But due to multiverse shenanigans, he ended up meeting up with these characters over here. Like we see him interacting with Ultraman here and he was having major issues. So it lets you know this Ultraman wasn't no weakling. And Injustice pulls up, catches him off guard and actually pops his neck so it lets you know like a normal human being couldn't pop Ultraman's neck so it lets you know that the strength gap must not be that large even though this was a cheap shot to pop his neck right here this right here as simple as this may seem this kind of changes the game on the limitations that we thought they were just planet busting and that's it we know these main continuity versions of these characters John Kent Rebirth Superman are them are way past planet shattering level and in these comics they actually compared Injustice Superman to John stated here your power could be stronger than our Superman could like they're implying they're not sure so i mean their power must not be far from each other like i honestly don't think y'all understand what this means like some of the stuff these characters in this continuity the main continuity have done is just kind of ridiculous like i'm talking about the main continuity superman lifting more than just the weight of a planet i'm talking about sun moving and stuff like that like it just gets ridiculous if you watch my wonder woman video and superman videos i already have on the channel for the main continuities this and all this stuff put together would kind of change the game for the injustice power levels they should by default even being remotely compared to some of these beings over here that would only make them way past planet shattering even star shattering which in turn would also make flash from the injustice look more impressive than we originally thought and John, in, in John's opinion, he considers Flash of the Injustice characters. He says, I got to take out the most dangerous one first. He had to negotiate Flash to sit this out, saying he's the most dangerous here. This kind of lets you know that the Injustice characters are more than likely way above planet level, even star shattering. But it's one of those situations it's hard to pinpoint. I don't want to throw out too much speculation. Just wanted to get that in there, that planet shattering should not be their limitation. This should apply for Flash 2 of Injustice. That's something to think about. So him simply trembling the moon or even trembling the earth or threatening the earth is still like technically disrespectful like when you compare the sizes of planets even though earth is a decent sized planet this technically shouldn't be nothing compared to planets like jupiter jupiter's way bigger than earth he should technically be able to devastate or tremble jupiter with his hits because when you look at jupiter compared to the size of the sun it just gets ridiculous and like the powerhouses in the main continuity are way above stars shattering so this is just a benchmark he should technically be able to destroy Jupiter with his punches, stuff of that size. It just gets up in the air on the limits of them. But what do you guys think? What do you think is the limit of Injustice Flash's punching power? I mean, he's massively faster than the light. His punches have to, by default, be able to blow away an entire planet, if we're being honest. But without speculating too much, I do believe a fair assumption would be like, maybe he can bust a Jupiter-sized planet. That would be a fair assumption, even if we don't want to assume star level. I think Jupiter shattering is definitely fair. I want to hear what you guys think. Did you learn something new? You probably didn't know these Injustice powerhouses had the kind of punching power to split planets in half and stuff based on the video game showings and such. But when you dissect them, you get to see that they're way past planet shattering. But before I get going, everybody, I got to give a quick thanks to the donators. It helps out a lot. Respect Barry Allen, The Flash from In The Injustice Saga. I'm glad you are enjoying your time on the channel. Make sure you check out the playlist on the channel to see other How Strong videos. If you like what this channel is offering, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys later.